Your 3D models lack context and are unrealistic when they're just floating around in space. In this tutorial, I'll show you three quick and easy methods to create a seamless backdrop that will both improve your presentation and make your models look much more professional. All right, let's get started. So what I have here in this scene is just basically two objects. I've got my stool model, which I'll be using for this demo, and then also a camera, which I have set up, um, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm looking through that camera. Um, so if you're in a hurry, I'll go ahead and show you the fastest method, which is the bevel method. So to do that, we're gonna add a plane, shift A, mesh, plane, it's going to create it right at our 3D cursor there in the middle. Um, and then I'm going to scale that up. And basically all I'm doing is creating um, an L shape onto which we can you know, then make a curve. So I select these back two vertices, press E to extrude, Z to go straight up. And then I'm going to select this corner right here by right clicking those two vertices. And then what I'm going to do is control B to start a bevel. And then I'm just going to drag outwards, and you'll notice, you know, it's only creating that straight edge, but we want a curve, so all we're going to do is scroll up on our mouse wheel a few times. This is just going to be kind of a background element, so we don't need a whole lot of resolution. So once that looks good to you, go ahead and click to complete that operation, and then I'm going to tab out of edit mode. And you'll notice that banding there. That's something we always want to get rid of. So uh, we can do that right here in the toolbar by smooth shading it. So really, that's about it. I mean, this is the fastest method. So I'm going to hit Shift Z to look in my rendered view over here. And, and it's looking all right. But obviously, what we're going to want to do is add at least one lamp. So I'm going to add an area lamp in this case. Let's bring that up a little bit. Uh, you'll notice those shadows are really harsh. Uh, that's something I don't want. So I'm going to go over here in the lamp settings and increase the size of the lamp. I'm going to put that at two feet, which, you know, if you're looking at this reference image, is, is probably almost what that is. Uh, this looks potentially a little bit bigger. And, and now you can see we've got much softer shadows. Uh, I don't want them going straight down really like that. So I'm, I'm actually going to move this back and then. Um, rotate it just a little bit. You know, if you want to be accurate, you can use those constraints like I just did. Another quick way is just to press G, grab it, and then press R twice, and you can kind of free rotate. And from here, you're able to to get just a decent, you know, a decent looking shadow for your model. So I think that looks good. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and move this to another layer and show you the two other methods. So the next method is just about as fast. We're going to follow a very similar process to get started. I'm going to add another plane, and this is going to be the subsurf method. So same plane, scale it up a little bit, select these back two vertices, and I'm going to press period to zoom in on them, and then three to go into side view. Um, extrude that up, and then select the whole thing. You can tap out of that, actually. And then we're going to add a subsurf modifier. So that is going to create our curve for us. It's very low resolution here, but if we just increase this a couple times, we're going to be left with something a little bit better. You'll notice, though, that the back legs of my stool here are sticking through. So to prevent that, we're just going to go back into edit mode by pressing tab. And then we're going to do control R to create an edge loop. And then we're going to put that just really anywhere right behind those legs so that the curve doesn't start until it's behind this tool. And we're good to go with that one. So also a very simple method. Um, one thing you will notice, let's go ahead and set that to smooth. One thing you'll notice is that uh, looking in wireframe, you've got a little bit of extra geometry here, which is... Um, you know, not a ton extra. It's really not that big of a deal. But if you're doing something like an animation, they, you know, having those extra polygons may end up increasing your render times beyond, you know, what's necessary. Um, and you'll notice here, we're kind of clipping a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just go back into edit mode, select all with A, and then scale that up on the X axis. So now it's, it's totally, it's out of view. And we're left with just our simple seamless backdrop. So 
I mentioned the extra polygons being a disadvantage for this, but one advantage for this is that um, if you look, we've got a little bit more of a natural curve here. And this may be more like what you would actually see in a photographer studio with, with uh, paper hanging, as opposed to the bevel method, which uh, let's go back to that layer. You'll notice, you know, that created kind of a more perfect curve, which in some studios that would be what you find. But you know, I tend to actually like this this slighter curve that's a little more irregular. So the third method is going to be maybe for you the best of both those worlds. We're going to um, we're going to get rid of this one and quickly move to the third method. So that method is going to be kind of a combination of the two. And in some cases, it may be faster. Again, just adding a plane. And then instead of using the subsurf or the bevel to create that curve, we're just going to do it manually. So I'm just going to move those vertices kind of back to right behind the stool. And, and then I'm just going to draw the curve. And this obviously gives you the most control. Not so accurate and maybe not a perfect curve. But again, a really quick method. And the advantage here is that we don't get those extra vertices. So we really have only exactly what we need. So I'll set that to smooth and, and that's pretty much it. We're done. So that's three really quick ways to create a seamless backdrop in your render and just, you know, all around good method for showing off products and, and just a quick, easy alternative to having your, to having your model just floating in space. Nobody likes that. It doesn't look realistic. Add a seamless backdrop, and you're and you're working with something that is is much more realistic and and will really help to highlight your model. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you guys next time.